tolerance and resilience are, is all about being somebody who can work well with anybody and everybody. Somebody who thrives no matter the situation and what, what gets thrown at us. And having that positive and healthy mindset really comes into play at those times. And so when we are mindful of our thoughts and actions, when our communications are clear, when we're organized and everybody around us understands what they need to do and what's expected of them. And when we share the information that we have, when we're doing those things, well, one, that puts us in a positive frame of mind. But two, it's also reducing the opportunities for that stress and the anxiety and those misunderstandings right, that lead to resistance and anger. So here are three things that, that I found very helpful over the years for those sort of specific moments where we do need to take a step back because we can feel our blood pressure rising. So the first one is, is to ask yourselves, okay, how do I want to be seen? So if I'm in a meeting and all of a sudden I get up and storm out, then I'm going to come across as somebody who's angry and impatient. So what does that do to my reputation for being somebody who can work with everybody and anybody? But more importantly, how does that actually help us deliver the project, right, and solve the problems that we need to solve. So a second one is, it's not personal. And you'll hear this a lot, and this is dead true, it really is. So in all the years that I've been working since I left school, and I've, I've worked for my fair share of terrible bosses, but at the end of the day, they've never been personal with their anger. For them, it's just there's a disconnect between what they expect from everybody and what is humanly possible, right? And that disconnect then being just kind of poor management and leadership. Which now leads me into the last point, which is look for that golden nugget. <clears throat> so in that disconnect there, where maybe somebody's always resistant to your ideas and they're always saying no, okay, well, have a think. Look past the delivery of what they're saying or how they're saying it and look for that nugget. See if you can find that underlying reason as to why they're always resistant. You know, Why does that disconnect is there? Because if we can find that, now what we're doing is we're now able to sit on their side of the table and see things from their point of view, their perspective. And when we can solve that problem for them, now we're really starting to build that relationship and get us from a point of, say, resistance to a point of trust, which is where we want to go. I'm Paul Fleming McCullough. Be helpful. <laughs>